Well, welcome back to the Iwi Den, and the conversation continues about altered pentatonics. This is part seven, and uh, it's my favorite kind of day. This is the, it's kind of where the rubber meets the road day. You know, we've gone over a lot of information, and information without action just kind of doesn't leave you with a lot, and I don't want that to be the case, so I want to show you the way I... Uh, how I integrated this stuff into my playing and how my students do it as well. So let's just outline the day and kind of see what we're going to do. First of all, I'm going to show you a scale routine that will allow you to keep track of your progress and know that you're absorbing the information. Second, we're going to go through some flexibility exercises. You know, it's just like a clear path to being able to hear it, being able to feel it, being able to think about when you could use it, and then playing and hearing in shapes. That's how I like to do it. I, I'm really not a lick layer I kind of use shapes to manage my creativity and then finally we're going to apply it to a musical context and uh, see some ways where we can apply all the shapes and the scales and the patterns to a musical context and integrate it into our improvisation and that's what we're doing so first of all you know this is probably not a beginning video if you can catch on to that you know you if you do not know all 12 major scales this will probably not be possible to do so first goal for everybody you know learn all 12 major scales if you go to the iwi den uh in the novice area there are nine nine lessons they're all free and they'll walk you right through all 12 major scales and that should be your first goal and then then after you get that done just like email me or text me and say, you know, what should I do next? And, and we'll do that. First of all, we need to understand that we're in the vocabulary stage. And in the vocabulary stage is when we're really just trying to understand as clearly as possible everything that's going on. And speed is your enemy in this, in this stage. So stay relaxed, stay focused, stay calm, don't rush anything. Just kind of enjoy what you're doing. Don't race the clock, even though we're going to use a timer. Uh, sing and say the scales in your mind and try to predict the patterns like try when we're doing patterns like try to sing the next note of the pattern while you're doing it that'll really help and if you just enjoy the process you'll show up more and you'll make faster progress and that is true okay we're going to set a timer and we're going to set it for 10 minutes. The reason for doing this is we know studies have shown that, you know, the attention span wanes between somewhere between 9 and 12 minutes. So we're not at peak performance if we go past that. I mean, we can practice something for an hour, but the first 9 minutes is when we're getting the most out of it. So, so what I would do is I would set a timer for 10 minutes, and then... When that's over, as far as dealing with the vocabulary, you could do another timer for application and improvisation exercises dealing with these same scales. But when that timer rings, move on to something else in your practice routine because you'll just you'll get over more things and you'll you'll make a lot better progress with with a lot less pain. You know, so ten minutes you you didn't drag it out and beat it to death and hate it. You know. And it's sort of like going to the gym, you know, if you didn't work out for a while and you go to the gym and it's like, oh, this feels great. And you do everything that you used to do, you know, you're going to go home and it's just going to be a wreck. You're going to not feel good and you're going to have a lot of pain the next day. And the odds of working out, again, probably diminish. So we're going to do the same thing, you know, just set a timer for 10 minutes and be happy that you did it. And you'll see uh, accelerated progress. When I started doing timers, like my progress exploded on many, many levels. So I, I hope that happens for you too. So here's the rules for the timer. So first of all, if the timer rings, you're done. Doesn't matter if you got finished the assignment or not. If it rings, you're done. You just keep doing the same thing. If you finish the task, you're done. But the next time you practice, you can move into the next step of, of this procedure that I'm about to show you. Well, let's just jump right into the vocabulary building. So step one is building the foundation. So you remember from the previous videos that uh, four of the scales we compared to a minor seventh uh, pentatonic or a minor seven pentatonic. And that would be, I would consider, a foundational scale because each one of the ones we're going to add next are going to change one note of the minor pentatonic. And the same, same thing with the major pentatonic. So we, we want to make sure we're very, very uh, solid on our major pentatonic because we're going to alter notes in the major pentatonic. I mean, the whole tone pentatonic, it actually alters too, but it's not so bad. So the first thing you want to do is you want to 
play these two scales, well, I would build them from the same note. Let's, let's, we'll just do everything from D because we've been doing that since we started the project here. So I would play both of these scales from D. And, and if you do that, and let me make sure everything is cool here. If I play D minor pentatonic followed by D major pentatonic, that's minor, here's major. I don't know, that might be eight seconds or something. And our timer is set for 10 minutes. So eight, well, let's say it's 10 seconds. 10 seconds times 12 keys, that's going to be two minutes. We should have eight minutes left in our timer. So that really shouldn't be a problem. So if, if your timer didn't ring, then tomorrow... Do we will go to the next stage? If it if it if your timer did ring and it took you more than ten minutes, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Just stay there until you're getting it done inside of ten minutes, and then you just move to the next step. So step two is going to be adding the minor sixth pentatonic. If you remember, we're just changing this flat seven to a six, right? So we play D minor seven pentatonic, D minor six pentatonic. D major pentatonic, and then D major flat six pentatonic. So it's giving you some good, uh, you know, focus on the six, which is great. And I would just play them the same way. So this would probably take, I don't know, I don't know if that took 10, this would probably take 20 seconds to do. Moving to major, D major. to G and go the whole way around the cycle and take your time. Next level, you can guess it and it's pretty predictable at this point, we're just going to add half diminished pentatonic, which and if we looked at the original minor seven, we're just going to flat the five, right? And then down here it's whole tone pentatonic, which is just the first five notes of a whole tone scale. And you can think of it as one, two, three, sharp four, sharp five, or one, two, three, flat five, flat six. So here's from D, D minor 7. Here's major. Major flat 6. Hold to Okay, then you go to G and do the same thing and right around the circle. All right, let's just keep moving. We only have one more to add. I think you get the idea of this. So you're going to play all of this whole list of scales over D, G, C, F, whole way around the circle, and make sure that you can do it inside of 10 minutes. Well, this could take some time to put together. If you're not used to altering tones and scales, it could take a couple weeks until this is getting comfortable. But when it gets comfortable, then you're going to have a lot to work with and you'll have a lot of new colors to add to your vocabulary. So I would encourage you to, to do it. Like make a commitment to do it for three months and see what happens because a lot will happen. Ten minutes a day for three months on this and you will be very happy, I'm sure. So now that we've worked on building the vocabulary, well now let's work on building flexibility and some discernible technique using these scales. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to play uh, two patterns, really pretty basic patterns, uh, and the first one I call threes. So we're just going to build one, two, three, three scale degrees up from each member of the scale. So we're going to go D, F, G, F, G, A, G, A, C, like that, up the scale in groups of threes. And then back down. And then, then we go to the next key, and the next key, and the next key. So the way to practice this was we'll still use our 10-minute timer, set our 10-minute timer, and then maybe play our G minor 7s and 3s around the circle of keys, and then minor 6s, and then half diminished, and just go down the list until the timer rings, then make a little note where it stopped, and the next day start where it stopped. And then you'll turn over the vocabulary and you can work your way through it. And if you do 10 minutes of flexibility exercises every day, you can expect to get pretty flexible using the scales. So here's 
Flexibility exercise number two. It's just the same thing except four notes up from each scale degree. So it'll be D, F, G, A, F, G, A, C, like that. So here I'll play the first one. And down. And the same plan, like set the timer and and then maybe do next you do minor six pentatonic in fours here I'll, I'll demonstrate that right and then we go on to minor flat five or go to another key but just do 10 minutes of drilling now the next group of flexibility exercises are based on intervals and so it, to do this in a major key we would do it would call we would call it third so in the key of C it would like C E D F E G F A like that it sound like this <laughs> So I'm playing an ascending third from each scale degree. And if you look right here, I have a little A, A. That means ascending, ascending. So this first interval is ascending, going up. And the second interval is going up. And they're all going up, right? It's a way to get some flexibility with our intervals. So if you looked at the scale, so we're going to skip D to G. Then we're going to skip F to A then G to C, and A to D. And if you think of the first pattern we did, the threes, it's D, F, G, it'll give you the skip, but don't play the F. So in your mind, think of the D. I'm skipping F, I'm playing the G. F, skipping G, playing A. G to C. At the very beginning, this can be a little bit of a head wreck, but if you keep doing it, it, they feel really good, the skips feel good, and then do it down. But when you go down, still do ascending, ascending, and that's just gonna keep it organized so we know what intervals we actually did practice. So here's ascending, ascending, going down the scale. So let's take a look at the next uh, group of skips. So what we'll do is we'll go up the first interval and then down the second interval. And so it'll be ascending, descending as we go up the scale. And then when I get to the top, I'll just go ascending, and then descending, but it's down the scale this time. So let's move on. The next one is descending, ascending. It's the same concept. We're going to go up the scale, but we'll play descending the first skip and then ascending the next skip. That's the same thing down. It's descending, then ascending, descending, then ascending. Then finally, we just do descending from every one. It's a skip down from every note of the scale. And that's really a great exercise. Here, I'll demonstrate the skips in the key of C. So they'll all be C roots, so it'll be like C minor 7, C minor 6, etc. And I'll do down the scale, a descending, ascending skip. So here's C minor 7. C minor 6. C half diminished. C dominant, add flat three. C major. 
major. C major flat six. And then whole tone. There you go. And that'll keep you busy. I mean, that makes you do some things. And it'll really get you flexible. And at the very least, it'll be very easy to think about the scale. So finally, we get to have some fun and apply all this stuff to a musical context. So here's a D minor 7, 8 bars, kind of a vamp. And uh, you'd want to set this up that it would change keys or continue to change it into different keys. But what we're going to do is each time it repeats, uh, we're going to change our activity. So first, we'll apply a pattern. And then when it repeats, then we'll improvise. And then we'll apply the next pattern. And then we'll improvise. We'll keep alternating choruses like that. First time through, we'll build off the one. We'll build a minor six off the one. So that would be D minor six pentatonic. Then the second time, it'll be E minor six pentatonic, or off the two. Then it'll be F whole tone off the flat three. And then it'll be... Uh, major six pentatonic off the five, so that would be A major flat six pentatonic, and finally we would do B half diminished pentatonic off the six. And so let's just do uh, threes. I'll do threes up duh, 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 with all these different scales. I'll announce what I'm doing, and every other time I'll improvise. Here's D minor six. <laughs> six off the two. E minor six. Down. Then improvise. Major flat six. diminished. This is a big exercise and it'll take some time to get onto it, but what will happen very quickly is you'll start to see the possible uh, altered pentatonics that are anchored in any given melodic minor, and that can really be helpful. So the next video that I'm going to do, uh, I'll show you the procedure for applying all of this to a minor blues, and that's something that I did every day for quite some time. And then all the then all this got pretty easy to do. So, be encouraged. Uh, go slow, 
and uh, be patient with yourself. And over time, this information put into action will yield uh, great benefits in your, in your soloing and flexibility when you improvise. Okay, have a great day. Bye-bye.